So yesterday I was texting my friend back and forth and we were having kind of a funny conversation earlier in the day around noon. And I just got off seeing patients around nine o'clock at night. We had not talked the whole day and I sent him a really inappropriate text message that was funny. And he said, holy crap, man, that was spooky. I was just going to text you something similar. Now, I think most of us have had synchronicity or these weird kind of meaningful coincidences in our lives. And there's all kinds of explanations and theories for what synchronicity really is. Is it a message from God? Is it something from the universe or just something indicating that you're in the flow of life? Even Carl Jung, who created the term synchronicity, believed that synchronicity was what he called an a-causal meaningful connection. So we never really know what the cause of a synchronicity is. No one can induce them on command. But the meaning behind them is so uncanny. They're, they, they're hookups from the universe. They're just like these shortcuts from whoever or whomever or whatever force you want to think of. Well, in this video, I want to share what I think synchronicity is and how you can trigger it more often. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book Master the Dizzle. Now for me, one of the things that helped me create more synchronicities, these weird coincidences in my life, was actually journaling. So it was journaling that not only helped me turn many of my goals into specific actions, but also helped me get more in tune with my intuition and in terms of how I wanted to improve my life or change my life. And really tap into whatever that feeling is, the body intuition. So I've included a free journaling worksheet and a series of emails that can help you begin journaling. It's the first link right there in the description. One of the craziest synchronicities in my life was when I was leaving China, I was 24 years old, I think, and I hadn't really bought myself any souvenir from the year living there, besides a really cool tea set. So I'm in the Beijing airport, and I'm just going through the bookstore because I had a couple hours for my flight. And I picked up this one book in a tiny little bookstore filled with like pop culture books and the book was filled with like all these cool Chinese medicine practices and herbs and acupuncture, massage, a philosophy on longevity and how to live to a hundred. And that book I took home, it was like about this, this thick, thousand pages. And every Sunday for about five years, I would spend two, three hours translating it just for fun. Cause I thought this was like, this was the stuff I always wanted to learn since I was a kid. Now, you'll never believe what that book was. Because I got that book at 24, 25. I went back to school to do my doctorate in Chinese medicine at 29. Four or five years later, and guess what that book turned out to be? The most important book in all of Chinese medicine. So think about the level of coincidence there. I picked a book up from an airport, not a Chinese medicine shop. What are the chances they had this 2,000-year-old text? Very unusual. It was the one book I picked. I translated it for fun for five years. And then I come to school and learn it's the most important book in the world for my profession. That's pretty insane. So how do I make sense of all this? How do you make sense of synchronicities in your life? Where you meet that one person at the right time, where you get that hookup to your dream job and it was effortless. When you meet a friend you haven't seen in 10 years in the weirdest, most unusual part of the earth. How do we make sense of these? And how do we make them happen more often? So here are three things I know for sure about synchronicity. The first thing is that synchronicity indicates that there is some deeper force occurring every single day that links all humans and maybe other things too, but links all people regardless of space or time. And that's why sometimes you get that synchronicity and it's like a shortcut to your goal. Sometimes you meet a person in a completely different country that you haven't seen in 10 years, that just statistically is not possible. So there is, it shows to me anyways, proof that there's a deeper force connecting people and that somehow non-materially we are all communicating in some way or some fashion in our world. The second thing I learned is that the way to induce more synchronicity in my mind, the only way is by following intuition. I find that if I ask for things to happen, whether through attention or prayer or things like that, more synchronicities will occur. But the only way they show up is non-linearly. 
from not from a logical sense. Like I can't control or predict when it's going to happen. You have to let them find you. And that's the crazy part and the frustrating part. Because you're like, yeah, I want, I want a $100,000 raise. Send me money. Hook me up, God. Make it rain. And then you're like, crickets. That's because we can't control it. It's not linear. This whole idea of intuition and synchronicity and the flow and it all comes when you least expect it or at least when you don't expect it. But what I know for sure is that over the last six months have I, as I've done exercises for my intuition and as I've been blindly trusting my intuition, the number of synchronicities has been off the charts on a daily basis. I mean, insane. Then the last thing I've learned is that intuition by itself, which I know leads to synchronicity if you follow it, the only way you can feel intuitions is if your mind is quiet. So that means when, when we're rushing from our job, we're like, oh, got to go, got two, three minutes. I got to read Alex's book in 30 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, boring, that's some old shit. And then we go to work, then we go to the friends, then we blah, 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 blah. This doesn't even give the space for intuition to happen. It's like when you're dating someone or you're at a job and you get so caught up in some aspect of the person or getting paid a lot at your job and you're working so many hours, you don't have time to think and feel, do I even like this job? Do I resonate with this person? And so the prerequisite for intuition is inner calm. And the prerequisite for synchronicity is intuition. So here's your homework. Here's your mission to become a magical manifester. The mission for more synchronicity is, number one, to spend more time writing down your intuitions. I actually track them now. Those ideas you feel in your body where you're like, ooh, yeah, I should do that. So whenever I feel that, I just write them down and then I do them. Maybe it says go to the bookstore. Maybe it says read that book. Maybe it says take that coffee meeting. You do that and express your goals, write them down, visualize them, think about them as much as possible. And then the irony, the paradox is that let them find you because they will find you through a synchronicity that you can't predict. But if you live when you know that it's going to find you, it's a pretty crazy way to live your life. So I hope that blew your mind, you guys. I don't know if synchronicity is like a message from God or what it is. But what I do know is that it's pretty crazy when it happens. And it can be induced a lot more. So again, for me, the way I got started is by actually just journaling. I journaled my ideas. I journaled my intuition. I journaled all the synchronicities I had. And I've included the first link there is a journaling e-course. You'll also get a download of a basic worksheet but you'll get an email every three days on core journaling practices and how you can use it as a beginner to improve your life. So if that interests you, check out the first link in the description. You can also check out my recent videos right there and right there.